All right, case four, and we've got a clinical photo, but you guys like that. Well, let's look at this one. So here's this uh, red uh, kind of a little plaque or papule, depending on the size of it. And then it's on sun damage, I think, uh, dorsal forearm, if I recall. Is that erythematous plaque on the dorsal forearm of a 60 year old woman? And then here's the, uh, the dermoscopy picture. You can see right there. Okay, so who would like to uh, comment on this case? So uh, here we have a uh, shape biopsy. Um, and from low power, you can see uh, some increased kind of white spaces. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're thinking, you know, uh, maybe there's some uh, increased blood vessels kind of uh, scattered throughout the uh, dermis. Um, and this is occurring in quite a bit of uh, solar elastosis, uh, which is kind of a clinical pathological correlate with the picture that you just showed us. Um, and so we're thinking maybe this was an acquired elastotic angioma. Oh, very good. You guys are too smart. So you, I like how you recognized right away from low power. Oh, let me get that into focus. Sorry. It's refreshing there. That you recognize right away there's a band of blue elastosis, but there are white spaces there, which probably represent vascular spaces. So that's great. And it's always good to kind of think of, uh, you know, what am I seeing at low power and what does that likely mean when I go in closer? And that's how you get kind of faster and, and better at pathology, which you're clearly have been very well trained. And since I know the derm paths who train you, I know that that's the case. So yes, and these vessels by themselves don't look terribly exciting. If you took any one of these vessels, like this one right here, it's a little bit like kind of T-shaped, you know, got like a little downward um, angle and then, then goes laterally to both sides. Just one of those, you'd say it's a telangiectasia, right? But here there's way too many to be a regular telangiectasia and you recognize that these vessels are embedded within this background of really abundant solar elastosis here. And given the clinical of a sun damage site on an older adult and a circumscribed round um, uh, uh, erythematous lesion, a plaque there, that, that with this appearance, that fits perfectly for a relatively new, uh, newly described entity. I mean, in the, I don't know, not really that new, but it's been around for a while now, but I think a lot of people still are not really familiar with it. That's called a acquired elastotic hemangioma or angioma. And uh, these tend to arise on sun damaged skin in middle aged to older adults. The, the dorsal forearm is a nice site for it. And when you see them, they have this really distinct appearance of many kind of ectatic, thin walled vascular channels embedded in the elastosis. And you know, you always have to be careful when you see a vascular lesion, especially a new vascular lesion, in sun damaged skin on an older adult. Because, of course, that's the kind of uh, clinical history uh, for angiosarcoma, right? Which obviously is very bad. And angiosarcoma sometimes has some dilated channels that don't have abundant atypia. But usually if you have a big enough biopsy, it will have obvious atypia um, and a very infiltrative growth pattern. But um, on this, we've got a nice shave. You can clearly see this is like a plate, like a plaque, right? That's just filling the dermis and is very much like an east to west lesion. It's going from the east over here to the west and it's not going down south you know it's not diving deep into the dermis okay there's also a little bit of like a pustule over it kind of incidentally in this case and so uh that's a nice example and these are benign and they're just good to know about because it, it gives you a an answer to why this person has a new erythematous lesion on their sun damaged skin and these vessels have a, a nice bland endothelial lining, um, single layer, might bulge into the lumen a little bit, but you don't have marked atypia, you don't have dramatic infiltrative and astomatic growth, um, the kinds of things you would see in an angiosarcoma. So these are uh, kind of an interesting uh, entity and they're benign and um, no further treatment is needed to my knowledge. And here at the edge, you can see there's a little bit of smaller vessels clustered around here too. Just the give you a different viewpoint. All right.